So today we're talking about The Odd Life of Timothy Green. It's a family drama from 2012, and, uh... I've talked about a lot of family movies for this show throughout the years. Uh, some of them were from Universal, Warner Brothers, Disney, Fox, all these different types of studios. But the big stipulation is that most of the time they were more family comedies. So this one is at least different in that, sure there's a few comedic moments in there, but they're very light. And for the most part, this is a drama. So at least this movie has that going for it. We wanted to tell you our story. There's just one thing. You're gonna find it hard to believe. We have explored every medical option. You couldn't have tried harder. Tonight, let's have a kid. You heard what the doctor said. Give it up. Our kid would never give up. Picasso with the pencil. Honest to a fault. Yes. yes. Our kid <laughs> would rock. Now what? We're moving on. Honey! There's something you need to see. Hi. Hi. I'm Timothy. 54 girl names on the list. And one boy. And it was Timothy. Timothy. <clears throat> There's something you need to know about me. I came from the garden. This is how I really felt. You know that he's different. Yeah, that's what I like about him. But that little guy of yours, he's something special. He's our something unexpected, our little miracle. It's kind of hard to label a movie like this because it's not really a cult classic, but it's also not some obscure forgotten movie. No, it's more or less just a movie that exists. But if you haven't heard of this movie, I think the best way to describe it right off the bat is it's kind of like if you took that Haley Joel Osment movie, AI, and mixed it with Little Shop of Horrors. And somehow make it less interesting than that sounds. Cindy and Jim Green live in the town of Stanleyville, home of the Stanleyville Pencil Factory. Though happily married, Cindy and Jim long for a child. Unfortunately, they are unable to conceive. They bury a box in their backyard containing all their wishes of what they hope a child of theirs might be. When a boy named Timothy magically appears at their door, the Greens learn that sometimes the unexpected can bring some of life's greatest gifts. We've seen movies like this all throughout the years. They're, they're movies that try to highlight very, very depressing situations, but they also try to show that even through all the darkness, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a rainbow after every thunderstorm. Right off the bat, I just want to say, it's not that this is a terrible movie or anything, and I feel like there are a lot of families out there that will really enjoy this movie, but... Eh, wasn't really my movie. The movie is about a young struggling couple played by Joel Edgerton and uh, Jennifer Garner. Once again, she's arrived on the blockbuster show. I, I can't stress this enough. I don't think she's a bad actress, but her agent must suck because she usually ends up landing in really crappy movies. And the problem with this couple is that they can't have a kid. And the movie sets up this framing device where you have it, they're talking to some older woman whose movie just starts off on the right foot because on the paperwork they were given for the adoption they didn't write down a reason for why they wanted the child and the woman says why didn't you write that in and they go it's a long story so naturally that means they have to explain it and then we go to the flashback world the diddly 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 and then we go into the story of the movie proper you didn't answer what makes you qualified oh we know there wasn't much space. We had so much to say. They established that this young couple just haven't been able to have a kid. They've tried orphanages before, but nothing's ever worked out for them. And when they were in hard financial trouble, they had to move to some small 50s Stepfordized type of town called Stanleyville, which its most exciting thing is that it is home of the pencil. The main economic drive in this town is a pencil factory. And this town is just obsessed with pencils. They have a museum dedicated to pencils, and the local soccer team is called the Erasers. And just wait until that town discovers things like hip-hop and the Richter scale. They end up settling into this town, and everybody just finds it weird that this fairly young couple doesn't have a kid. And of course that hurts them to their core, because they've tried so hard to have one. One night, the two decide, you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll write down on little pieces of paper what we wish the perfect kid is like, 
and then we'll put it in a shoebox, bury it, and let it all be in the past. Then we'll move on with our lives. Our kid, <laughs> our kid <laughs> would rock. Ah, we so agree. Rock. Good, break that uh, Love and be loved. How great an athlete are you picturing? You were terrible at soccer. Our kid, amazing kid, got to score the winning goal. When I was watching the movie, that whole concept of like the perfect child started making my mind wander. I'm like, if you replace child with girlfriend, isn't this the plot to Weird Science? It's pretty much like AI with Haley Joel Osment, except instead of having the kid be a robot, the kid is part plant, which is why I made the Little Shop of Horrors connection too. They end up burying the shoebox, and they go inside, and then that night, it just so happens to rain. And the next morning, they wake up, and there's some muddy little boy who's about 12 years old, I guess, and he just sees them as his parents. And then they realize, whoa, it, it came true. All the stuff we wrote down into the perfect child, it all came true. Call us Mr. and Mrs. Green. Mr. Green. Not many people do, but... Mom. Really? Going into this movie, I had this fear that the child was just going to be needlessly perfect. Uh, I mean, they write in for him to have flaws, like stuff like honest to a fault and stuff like that. But I was worried that they were going to make the kid like precocious and they're going to have him say a bunch of stuff that a 12 year old wouldn't say. And while there is a little bit of that, I actually didn't mind the kid character. I didn't mind the title character of Timothy Green in this. The kid actor they had playing him actually wasn't that bad. What did you put in there? He, he's well, about to fall over. anything he might need. Notebooks, pencils. Oh, there's a box of tissues on the bottom. It's a band-aid. There's a whole first aid kit, actually, just in case. A variety of healthy snacks and treats and graham crackers. I know you like them. And then flashlight and some batteries. Mom, I think I can handle it from here. He actually did a pretty good job for a kid actor his age. And even though they do have scenes where he's supposed to be saying things that are profound and, oh, the, you know, from the mouth of babes and stuff like that, I actually did think that he was one of the better things in the movie. You know what really irked me in this movie? The parent characters. Because all throughout the movie, these people just consistently make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. And it, it, after a while, it's just like, okay, there's being new to parenting, and then there's making the occasional mistake here and there. No one's perfect. And then you just get to the stuff that these people do, and it's like, that's just stupid. One of the first things they do is they get Timothy Green enrolled into the local school and he gets picked on by some generic movie bullies and one of the bullies just happens to be the son of Joel Edgerton's boss. So there's obviously a, a little conflict started right there. Um, and then it turns out that bully is having a birthday party and Timothy Green wants to go because they keep cutting back and forth all throughout the film. Uh, the old lady's like, please tell me you didn't let him go to that kid's birthday party. Next Saturday, we're having a birthday party pool bash, and we'd love it if Timothy would come. Yes. Oh, please, don't tell me. You took him back to the house of the boys who bullied him? He really, really wanted to go. I especially like how Joel Edgerton describes it. He goes, oh, we wanted to teach him how to fight his own battles which really contradicts a thing that is said in a couple scenes later. So you let him decide what was best. I thought it was time he learned to fight his own battles. And this just leads to the many stupid parenting choices all throughout this movie. They end up letting the kid go to this party and, you know, there's a swimming pool in the backyard, there's a bunch of kids there, and Timothy Green locks eyes with this one girl who's like a year or two older than him, maybe. Um, and they clearly like each other right off the bat. It's, it's a meet cute. And uh, Timothy Green, he has these green socks on all throughout the movie because that's the thing. Not only did he come from the earth, but he has leaves growing off of his legs. And so they try to hide that from everybody else. And so he even wears the socks when he goes swimming. So he jumps into the pool, sinks to the bottom of it. Nobody seems to notice this except for this girl. So she dives in to try and rescue him. And then this is another thing about this movie. They try to show off like hardships and some of the awkward moments that happen in people's lives or the bad moments in people's lives, but then try to show that like good can come from it, which is all well and good. And I think that in, you know, in a better written movie, you can definitely do stuff like that. When the girl dives in, she ends up pulling down his socks and revealing the leaves on his legs. And then he kicks her in the face. I 
And what's weirder is how the parents react to it, because what happens is, uh, after that scene, they tell him, oh, if you see that girl again, run away. If you see her coming, just run the other way. So if he sees this girl that found out his fantasy movie secret, you know, don't, don't interact with her at all. But it's apparently a good idea to send your kid to a birthday party being held for some bullies that were picking on him at school because you wanted to teach him to fight his own battles. And then that leads into a whole subplot with this girl because Timothy Green and her end up bonding. She doesn't seem at all disturbed by the leaves growing off of his legs because uh, she says that she has a birthmark that looks funny. So they bond over their quirkiness and their differences. Uh, and then you, this just leads to a bunch of montages that make up a lot of this movie. You and he was spending far too much time with that girl. Was it a problem for you? Well, they were up to something and we didn't know what. There's parts of the movie that take place during autumn, so you got, you know, leaves browning off of trees and falling down in slow motion, and there's scenes where they're running through the forest, and she's on a bicycle, and he's running to try and, you know, keep up with her. They end up making a tree fort together, uh, and they end up forming a very special friendship. And then for some reason, Jennifer Garner, before she even really gets to know this girl, she goes, like, she just goes to her and says, I don't like you, stay away from my son that you're the best influence on my son. And I want you to tell me what you know about him. And, and later she sees her and Timothy Green having fun together, and she's like, oh, never mind. Yeah, those two kids, they're really good friends. They deserve each other. And I'm like, she had no reason to hate that girl in the first place. And I'm just saying, her plant child kicked her in the face. And then she has the audacity to say that that girl was a bad influence. And then there's just a bunch of parts in the movie where it's like, that's a really stupid thing to do. Why would you do that? Like, okay, they established that the family is going to be going through financial trouble because Joel Edgerton might get laid off at the pencil factory because the pencil factory is starting to go down. So while that's going on, Jennifer Garner has this mean old boss lady that she works for at her job. And at one point she brings Timothy Green with her to work. One of Timothy Green's many talents is that he's apparently a really good artist. So he draws a picture of her and he captures every single detail, even the ones that she doesn't like, like little hairs on her chin. And so she gets all defensive and then Jennifer Garner just decides to say screw it and she goes off on her and talks about all the things that she hates about her. Sometimes you wear plaids and stripes that clash. One joke that you always tell. It's not funny. I've tried so hard to like you, but if someone asked me to be a pallbearer at your funeral, I would tell them not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And then she gets fired from her job. I lost my job. I didn't regret most of what I said. But you lost your job. They're not just negligent parents. They're not just, you know, fresh and new to the concept of parenting. These people are just stupid. Like, I feel like even if the kid wasn't there, something like this would have come up and it would have been their fault. Another reason why these people are really bad at this whole parenting thing is because they feel like the kind of people who have kids just so that they can brag about it. And they joke about that in movies like Game Night, but the thing is, Game Night was an R-rated, cynical, dark comedy. So think about all the dum-dums that have kids, right? And think about how much better our kid is gonna be than their kids. It's gonna beat their kids at everything. It's taking you this long to see that our baby is gonna mm. crush every other baby. That's what made it kind of funny. In this movie, I, I felt like the movie was trying to say, yes, these are people who aren't very good at parenting, but then they get essentially rewarded for it, and you're supposed to sympathize with them. Like, okay, they have two rivals in the movie. You have it that Joel Edgerton is against his father, aka Timothy Green's grandpa, and they establish that he has daddy issues, he has lots of problems with his father, he wasn't there for him as a kid, uh, and one of the things is that he never saw Joel Edgerton play soccer when he was a kid, and when he did, he often screwed up, and his dad would berate him for it. And the other character is Jennifer Garner's sister, who is one of these people who has tons of kids and has to constantly brag about the things that her kids can do and all their successes and their accolades, and all the while putting Jennifer Garner down and saying that she was a failure and a screw-up and that she'll never be as good as she is. This all comes together when there's this big soccer scene uh, it's the big town game that's going to make or break the town soccer season. 
and Timothy Green is at first benched by the the captain of the team, who's played by a rapper, a uh, common. I Coach Cal doesn't see. You know, he's he's like you know oh that kid he's not going to go places he's not a very good soccer player. Then when it starts to come down to the wire, then he decides to let him in. Even when it seems like they're going to lose, he's like you know what screw it get that kid in there. So. Uh, then Timothy starts doing really well because that was one of the things they wrote down. They wrote down that they wanted their kid to be good at soccer and he'll be so good he'll make the winning shot. As soon as Timothy starts doing really good in the game, Joel Edgerton just like mouths off to his dad like, yeah, you see that? You thought I was such a screw up. You thought I sucked at soccer, but look at that. My son is doing great at soccer out there. See what happens when you believe in him? Huh? I could have been like that because I had skills, but no, no. Come on, Timothy, go, go. Then Jennifer Garner's doing the same thing to her sister. Like, I always had to listen to how perfect your kids were. Well, look at that. My son is winning this soccer match. I don't believe it. Don't believe it, sister. For years I've been listening to how perfect your kids are. Well, look at that. That kid is mine. I'm like, I get that it's supposed to be kind of funny in like a, you know, triumphant way. Like, oh yeah, they're finally sticking it to those crusty assholes. Uh, but then it results in a wah wah kind of joke because he ends up shooting the winning shot for the other team. And now the whole town hates him. You've told me all this stuff that you've done. If we were to assume that all of this is even true, then what would you do differently if we let you adopt a child? At first, I thought they were going to have it like, we'd learn. You seem to forget what the object is here. You need to persuade us. Tell me, what would you do differently? Uh, we'd make better mistakes. Better? Different. Not the same. New. New mistakes. That's, that's what we do. Yeah. No, the, the saying is, you make mistakes to learn from them. Why would you say, yeah, we made mistakes, and we will go on to make new mistakes. Going back to Jennifer Garner's sister really quick, there's a scene where she holds some kind of musical recital for the town, and because Jennifer Garner said that Timothy Green was really good at music, she decides to bring him on stage to try and embarrass him and her sister. So what they end up doing is Timothy Green, along with the parents, then do this like pseudo acapella rendition of that lowrider song. <laughs> Considering how Mayberry-esque this town is, part of me feels like nobody in this town should know what that lowrider song is. Hell, I barely know what it is. The only reason I know about it is because it was the theme song to the George Lopez show. And I didn't even watch that show all that much. I don't know, something about that scene was just weirding me out. Like I mentioned earlier with Joel Edgerton possibly getting laid off and the pencil factory not doing very well, uh, they established very early on that the pencil factory is failing because it needs something new that people can afford, something that's, you know, probably better for the environment. So what they come up with is a pencil made out of leaves. And it was Timothy Green and his parents' idea. But the evil big bad boss man of Joel Edgerton takes that idea for himself and says they're going into production and takes credit for the whole thing. And they do this at some big town meeting and then Timothy Green stands up and says, no, that was my parents' idea. You're taking credit for something that wasn't your idea. Then the big question comes out of, how did you come up with an idea like this? And he reveals to the town that he has leaves growing on his legs and you know, oh, the secret is out. Yeah, the story itself basically ends with the whole town figuring out about this. Um, and they also established that the kid is gradually losing leaves and no one really knows what it means, but it eventually ends with the kid passing away. So the more leaves he loses, he ends up dying. And then horrible flashbacks to Eddie Murphy's A Thousand Words came into my mind because I reviewed that last year. And that involved Eddie Murphy having to keep quiet because if this one tree in his backyard lost all of its leaves, then that means he would die. And I was like, damn it. They came out in the same year. They're both about trees and something losing leaves that's going to result in somebody dying. The movie ends with them being rewarded. After saying that, and after telling this story that sounds crazy, the orphanage lets them adopt a new child. You could call us. Whatever you want. <laughs> I'm 
Lily. You want to come inside? Final thoughts. Uh, I almost said Odd Life of Benjamin Button. That's not right. <laughs> as much as I was ragging, I can see people liking this movie. And that's totally fine. I can definitely see this movie having an audience. It's just that for me, this movie just felt really schmaltzy. I feel like this kind of movie, if you're going to do something like this, like this interesting of a concept, you need to make it either darker or make it a little bit more thought provoking. But no, they, they just went for the, the schmaltzy card. You had all these scenes of, you know, inquisitive autumn scenery and people frolicking through fields and the forest as the leaves fall down in slow motion and everyone has big smiles on their faces like Aside from AI, another movie it made me think of was Edward Scissorhands. You have it that there's this kind of otherworldly being who comes to the small town and changes so many people's lives. But that movie was a lot darker. And that's the thing with this movie. You set up conflicts that go nowhere, or you have things that aren't really issues in the first place, or you have it that characters get into situations because of their own stupid actions. At the end of the day, this movie's definitely going to work a lot better with other people. I could definitely see families enjoying this kind of movie, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just me personally, these movies either work or they don't, in my opinion. I like some of them, and I don't like some of them. And this one leaned more on the didn't really like it, but it's still far from the worst movie I've ever seen. It's, it's just not my kind of movie. Adam, why do you have to go after movies like this and Alexander and Bedtime Stories and Old Dogs and other live-action Disney movies from the 2000s that you know you're not going to care about. Why do you have to talk about them? I hate Adam Sykes of the Blockbuster Show. I hope that he dies in Minecraft. <laughs> that does it for this episode. Tune in next time to the Blockbuster Show where we got another anime review, and we're going to be talking about one that's uh, currently on its third season. There's talks of them making a fourth one and eventually making an OVA for it. It's based on the shonen comedy manga known as Dropkick on my devil, also known as Jashin Chan Drapikiku. But until then, guys, I'm Adam Sykes of the Blockbuster Show, and we will see you guys in the next video.